good day and welcome back. So in our previous video, section one of chapter five on maps, we look at creating a map, um, not what I would call the runtime we're using. Um, we look at this way of creating a map, which is basically the compile time of creating a map. Today, we're gonna look at how to, another way of constructing a map, which I call the runtime way of constructing a map. And here we look at, and we also looked at inserting value into a map in that video and retrieving values. Today we're going to be looking at how you delete values in a map and of course again like I said another way of constructing a map which I'm going to call the runtime way. This way is your compile time way. And then um, in the next video we look at iteration, you know, how you loop over the values in your map and keys in your map. And today also we'll look at getting the length of a map. So um, not too much in this chapter but still enough for us to have a decent length video. Um, so let's see. Uh, like I said, we'll be looking at making, um, creating a map at runtime, inserting element, retrieving element again, even though we've covered these two before, deleting element and counting the number of an element using the length function. So let's jump into it. So I'm going to close this. Um, and here, basically what I did was I copied um, our section one directory to section two, and then I started the editor in section two. And this is the code that we had from the previous time, uh, from the last video, and it's the exact same code. It's unmodified so far. I'm gonna start modifying it now, but what I'm gonna do is get, hide this file explorer because I don't really, it's just one file and I don't need to navigate to multiple files. Just give us some more room here. Okay, one thing I need to say, I should have said earlier. I am on vacation for the next two weeks. And so where I'm getting to record my video might vary from time to time. And so you might hear birds in the background, trees, um, I mean trees, trucks is what I meant to say. Trucks, cars, and people talking and whatever. Um, it just all depends on where I am and where I get to record my videos. But um, rest assured, I'm gonna try and still put out some videos from time to time, even though I'm on vacation. Um, and I'll be doing a lot of things um, in terms of where I'm at, but I'll still try to push out those videos. But I wanted to let you know that the noise and stuff you hear, sorry about it, but I'll try to find some quiet place or as quiet a place as I can, but yeah, there will be noise. Um, all right, so let's look at this. So nothing too interesting here. Um, like I said, so this here is gonna be using maps, okay? Creating and using maps, okay? And we said it so you can create a map by this, like this. It's just, um, here's a nil map. Um, a map is also uh, like your slice, and later on we'll see a function. It's a reference type, meaning that oh, the data type here refers to something that is more complex, and so a lot more detailed. So it's possible when you create a variable of this type, like when you create a slice, it doesn't point, has an array um, yet until you either slice an existing array or you dynamically create a slice with the make function. And we're gonna use that same make function, of course the format is gonna be slightly different, to create maps at runtime. Now here, this is why I call this compile time, because here you have defined the map and its keys and values, and it's right there for you to see. And so Go was able to allocate that map, and it's not a nil map, and put values in it and return it, okay? And so for now, let's just, get rid of um, one of these and some of these. Let's get rid of these and simplify the number of maps we're playing with. So I'm going to do this. And so I'm going to say, what if, and of course we can run this to see what's going on. So we can say go um, run main.go and exactly what we expect. Nothing too interesting, right? Um, you know, if we want, we can say print F, or we can say my map, um, percent V uh, backslash N, and like that. And once that's saved, there you go. I'm going to run it, and you know, it's just a map, right? Nothing interesting. Okay, but what if I wanted to um, allocate um, this map? at runtime, so I can say m is equals to make, and the map I wanna make, if you look here, it's map 
of int of int, right? So I want to say make map of int to int, right? Because that's the variable that I have. And so I'm going to resign that, assign that. Now, unlike when we were making slices where you can pass the capacity, the length or, and capacity, we, we don't need to do length for a map because remember, the map, the nice thing with a map is that you don't have to worry about the length up front. As you insert more things into it, it just grows, okay? And so, um, now that you have this map, um, let's print it out and see. So, I'm going to do that. And um, maybe, uh, let's just comment out this guy for a second. And let's just do it one map. And so, let's call it M. M. I'm going to save it and go back here. I'm going to run. And notice, they don't look very different. Um, as a matter of fact, one of the things we can do is we can say percent um, length, percent V, and I'm going to do this. Length is how you take the length of a map. And because I'm lazy and I don't want to type that again, I'm just going to copy it and then delete this. And then I guess Command S on the Mac to save. And I'm going to run it. And notice how oh, both um, still zero. The thing is, when you have a nil map, before we create something, like for example, we can say i or some v colon is equals to my nil map and try to get something out of it. Since it's an int, I'll put an int. I'll say try and look up the value 5. And let's see if we have, um, see, um, a, an error. And so I'm going to say fmt that print f. Remember, my map is nil, and I tried to look up something in my nil map, right? So m colon um, uh, 5, what is that value? And the value is supposed to be, um, uh, supposed to be v, right? Because that's what I said I want to do. I want to take my nil map, look up this integer 5 from it, and print that out. So for something that's nil, you'd expect that I shouldn't be able to do any lookup from it, right? But look at that. It just said it was zero. So you might be a little bit confused as to why it didn't give you an ex runtime exception when you try to look up. And the reason for that is for Go, in Go, even though this is a nil map, since Go has sensible default for the zero value or the default value for types, well, if you try to look up something that's not there, when you just give you the default one, which is zero. So if this was string type, it would just give you the default for a string, which is just an empty string. And same thing with the numbers, right? You know, if it was float, it would give you, um, you know, zero also and so on. So numeric type, if it was Boolean, it would give you false. So it makes sensible defaults. What you cannot do is try to insert into a nil map. So I cannot say, for example, m4, for example, is equals to v. Here I have a value of zero, yes, as a default type when I looked it up here, but I cannot try to insert sort into this map because this map is nil. It's not going to go allocated for me automatically. So if I try to run this now, I'll have a runtime exception. And there you see, you see assign into entry to a, into a nil map. But once I have made my map, now I can insert into it, okay? And so I'll let that save and run again. And now you see that works perfectly fine. Where the key is four and the value was one and the length of course of my map is as we expect, it should be one, all right? And so if you make a new map, the length of it is zero. It looks just like uh, the length of a nil map. And of course, I can, as you see out here, I can do length on a nil map just like you do length on a slice, a nil slice, right? Because we said that the structure for the slice when it's nil, well, no problem. Uh, it just doesn't have any length, right? The capacity is zero also, just doesn't have an underlying array. All right, so now we know how to create a map at runtime. We can also do it at compile time and initialize it with values if we know them, or we could create at runtime and sort of get the same effect right so let me copy this so 
here once we create our map let me try and uh, see if I can how easily can I do this um, doesn't seem like there's a super easy way to really do this so let me just do it this way all right so um, this uh, here I want to replace this with equal 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 if I was in VI or something I could think and then here I want to say M open square brackets and then close square bracket so I want to say so let me do this copy paste copy paste 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 and then I'll do this and if I copy it then I can just click and paste click and paste click and paste click and paste all right and so this like we said is equal all right so let me save and now I have essentially this same thing here all right so the one thing is when you create a map dynamically or at runtime you cannot provide the values for it that's the one thing drawback but it does give you the option to create in that map you know at runtime and here um, I can still use it and print it out and I get the same results so regardless of how you create the map whether it's runtime or compile time you can still grow them and use them the same way so for example I'm gonna be able to do this I'm going to copy this line and I'm going to say map, um, I'm going to say debug before delete. And then this is, you know, some debug statement after delete. Okay. And so map of that, whatever, let's do equals, let's do equals here. And here, let's do equals also. All right. So what I want to do now is do a delete. So delete. There we go. Oh, no, it's not a function. I had the for. I want delete. There we go. Delete. And I want to delete from this map M. And I want to delete key. Let's get rid of key 2, for example. Uh, come on. Key 2 okay and now we're going to check the length and the map after we've deleted and so i run and you can see before i deleted my length was six and add this element and then after i deleted something different okay i no longer have key two anywhere in my map and the length is one less so that's how you delete so i think this very short video shows you how to allocate your map at runtime and again it doesn't matter in terms of the usage if you allocate the map at runtime or at compile time you create one you can insert and grow that map or you can delete from the map okay both allow you the same thing you can delete from a map you create at compile time and of course you can insert and retrieve values from that map and there we go you get the length of the number of elements in the map in the next video, we'll see how to iterate over elements, the elements of a map, how to do that very easily. Um, since this is the index is not an, always an integer, like an array, and besides, you know, unlike an array where you have the number of elements, there's a direct relation to the index. It starts from zero to one less than the length. With a map, you do not have that, okay? Um, now, if we've deleted this map now, um, element from this map, look at our index, our index is, you know, our key rather, now we the index, our key is 5, 6, 0, 1, and 3. It's not like an index, but we're not going to get too technical about it. And, but it's different, you know, knowing that though this length is, is 5 doesn't really help us because you could see we have a key that is 6. So you cannot use iteration the way you know it to, to go over the, the elements of a map. All right, so that's it. I'm going to keep this short, try it out, play with it, and see you in the very next video where we're going to look at iteration. All right, take care and have a great day. Bye. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for spreading the word. Thank you for coming back and, you know, spending your time with me, your valuable time. I do appreciate it.
Take care.